Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Jessica Clemens, and I'll be breaking down Paramount Pictures' newest trailer for A Quiet Place Day One. Yes, it is indeed scary season in the summer. This is the prequel to A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place 2. In those movies, we watched the Abbott family survival with a baby, no less. This prequel will follow Sam, Lupita Nyong'o's character, on the first day the creatures landed on Earth. She's one of a million people scrambling in New York and what a horrible place to be when aliens with hypersensitive hearing attack. That's like being in Six Flags. And before we get into it, a reminder to go check out our latest merch over at nerdriot.shop. Right now, you can grab our Multiverse Tour shirt to celebrate the many eras of Deadpool. Grabbing a piece of merch from nerdriot.shop is a great way to support our channel and all the awesome work we do here at New Rockstars for you. Now, shh. Let's get into A Quiet Place. John Krasinski wrote and directed the first two movies. This movie he wrote, but directed by Michael Cernowski, who directed Pig. If you saw Pig, this man went to incredible lengths to save his pet pig. Literally did everything it took to rescue that pig. And along the way, he meets people from his past that either help or interrupt his journey. The essence is already strung together in this movie about a woman with her cat creating bonds with people on her journey to survive. All to say, I think Michael can really cook with this movie. We open with the footage of John Krasinski from the first movie, listening to a radio for The Signal. Lee was always sending out those SOSs. It says day 471, then ticks to day 472 and shows us the corresponding footage to their corresponding days from the movies. The timeline for A Quiet Place is weird and always up for debate. In the first movie, we saw Lee's whiteboard of chaos and newspaper clippings. Many of the dates say November 2018, but then Bo died three months into the attack in 2020. So like, it doesn't really add up. Also, if everything was destroyed in the first few days, how are people just printing newspapers? You think they just run away or, you know, Spray paint stuff, spray paint messages, don't print press. I'm sure all of it was with the belief of making only one, like John Krasinski mentioned before with The Hollywood Reporter, which in my opinion is fine. I don't care about the theoretics of the timeline as much as I care about the story and stress I get in my chair every time that baby cries. In this trailer though, we see day one in New York. We open with this day in the second movie about the Abbott family. They live in a very small town outside of New York. It was during the baseball game when the aliens landed. We didn't know where the aliens came from and I assumed it was just from space because aliens usually come from space in thriller movies like this. And John Krasinski in an interview mentioned how in his mind they came from another planet that was already destroyed. I'm assuming they landed in spring since they're playing baseball, but it looks like in this trailer it's chilly by the look of the New Yorker's wardrobe. So this might be a slip up or it's early March, late February. I don't really know New York weather like that. In the trailer, the ticker counts up from day 472 to 476 and they showcase corresponding scenes to emotional scenes that could curt the first and second movie. Then the ticker jumps from day 4 477 to 407, 332, 118, eventually landing on one. We shot through those dates, but between day one and 472, a lot happened. On day 89, the world is basically wiped out. This is the day that Bo is killed by that one creature after playing with that toy on the train tracks. So this is almost three months into the attack. In the trailer, the damage is done on the first day immediately. So how barren the world is by day 89 makes sense because everyone assimilated or just died trying. Day 472 and 473 was a year and some change into the family's comfortable existence on the farm in confinement. This is the majority of the first movie. They're fighting the creatures on the property and Lee dies. Day 474 brings us into the second movie, which picks up right after the events of the first movie. They're leaving the farm. The movie really covers the remaining 475, 476, and day 477. We jump to the infamous New York City skyline back to the trailer, a nice shot of the Empire State Building, and it looks like the sun's rising on New York. I'm only noting this because we don't know what the time of day or season the aliens actually landed on. We think it's spring because of the baseball game in the second movie. They shot this scene in June of 2023, so I think it's intentional that Sam is bundled up right now. Sam's walking in New York, and for the most part, it's a normal day. Everyone's cruising, all honks, no banter, which is very important. This franchise depends on literal silence. There's a joke people use online, the one that's like, the silence is deafening. And that's what we want from this movie. I want to hear every step from Foley, the ambiance, the subtle hints of nature, everything, because we're spotlighting the silence. She looks up to the sounds from above and we see balls of light beaming across an empty sky. A lone scream, little faint whispers, and what looks like the stars are falling during the day. Then a massive ball of light flies over our screen into the ground, shattering the pavement, and we're back to black. Like Godzilla Minus One, we open to the debris all over the place. People scattered and one woman illuminated amongst the destruction. Easily one of my favorite contrasted shots, like the village in the dark disaster, there's our leading ray of light, which is Sam. The impact has caused her and our hearing to cave. So we're hearing the sound of an electric buzz like we have tinnitus. Our ears are clearly ruptured. Also, these aliens give zero f 
They're yanking people left and right. Also, I get it, you're scared. This man grabs Sam under the car and begs for help, but like, what is she gonna do? Tell him to quit? Like, you guys, she's looking for her cat. I think about this all the time. Something like a zombie outbreak, alien invasion, something wild happening, it would just be me and my cat against the world. She would be a pain in the ass 100%, but she doesn't talk, so, you know. We good, she eats before me, we twins up in here. I don't have a ton of time to sleep, so I have to make sure when I do, I lay down, I'm getting the best sleep possible, which is why I'm so thrilled that this video is being sponsored by Beam's Dream Powder. Dream Powder is a super tasty nighttime cocoa available with or without CBD. Ooh. Dream comes in a variety of truly delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and sea salt caramel, just to name a few. I've been in a cinnamon cocoa mood lately and it's nicely spiced. It helps me fall asleep faster and I wake up feeling more alert and better rested. All Dream Powder is gluten-free, keto-free, non-GMO, keto-friendly, vegan, and so good. One serving of Dream Powder has no added sugar, is only 15 calories, and depending on what version you get, also contains ingredients such as melatonin, magnesium, and reishi extract to help you fall asleep and get the most restful sleep possible. I love that Dream has a high quality sleep ingredient that leave me with zero grogginess the next day. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported Dream helped them get a better night's sleep and woke Woke up feeling more refreshed. Go to shopbeam.com slash new rockstars and use code rockstars to get up to 35% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Then we cut to Joseph Quinn, the man who stole our hearts as Eddie Munson in Stranger Things. He plays a man named Eric. He looks like he's in a suit and will be the complete opposite of Sam's character. I think if we learn anything from Barbarian, 10 Cloverfield Lane, or It Comes at Night, honestly, most horror movies that involve a crisis and strangers having to be in forced proximity, it never ends well for someone. The last films followed a family. This is following strangers. They don't have the same connection or expectation to defend each other. I like these types of movies because they stress me out and challenge all of our morals. Immediately, the internet also picked up they were using the sport track from Alien Covenant written and performed by Jed Curzel in the trailer. I think it's used during the god awful med bay scene from Alien Covenant. I don't like it. I don't like that scene. I didn't see any other big alien Easter eggs, but in Alien Covenant, they discovered this planet that immediately became dangerous when the aliens started attacking. And like this movie, all seemed great on Earth until the aliens came and started attacking. Also, I'm excited for Quinn. This isn't new for him as an actor seeing as Stranger Things is kind of sort of going through the same pickle. What if Eddie died in Stranger Things and was just reincarnated as Eric in this universe? They both are scaredy cats, so I think it's true. Speaking of cats, this beautiful baby is named Frodo. Ooh. Eric and I were talking and yes, and of course it is all one big Lord of the Rings reference. Frodo left the Shire with Sam on a journey to destroy the ring at Mount Doom. According to Entertainment Weekly, Sam is on a day trip to New York, which is about to become a journey of itself. And her name is Sam. She's carrying Frodo throughout the trailer. Y'all remember Return of the King? I can't carry it for you but I can carry you. Though it seems like Eric will also accompany them, he might be the Boromir and be crazy, then sacrifice himself. I'm solely going off the scenes where he looks like an uptight suit and Sam looks chill, willing to protect a cat throughout the entire movie. And before you say that cat will be screaming at 2 a.m., you know what? You might be right, it might, because cats like to do that. But also, cats are better than a damn baby. I'm just saying, having a baby during all of this is insane. Eric and I got into this during the sneak peek, but you're putting everyone in danger by getting pregnant, and I just don't know what they were thinking in the last movie. They're in a New York City subway, which normally is the opposite of quiet, but during the murder and mayhem, it's probably the quietest place on earth. Then we jump to the busy, busy New York streets. Cars are smoking, buildings are smashed, but no one is running, they're walking. So I wonder maybe on like day two, three, or four, they realize that it's sound and they're trying to evacuate everyone slowly and quietly, but you know damn well, one person is gonna fart and all hell's gonna break loose. We cut to the hospital, two nurses run down an empty hallway, but the siren lights above them are blaring. This might be Alex Wolf's character, who we know is in the movie, Movie, just not the role yet. This sequence is so eye-opening in the trailer in terms of sound. People march through New York, the hospital sirens, Eric screaming while it pours rain outside, a blast of light that could be from the initial landing scene, and still no actual sound. Eric is now outside and from behind, it looks like an unfinished skyscraper building. His tie swung over his shoulder. And between that and the pained expression of fear on his face, I'd argue he's walking across a high steel beam. The street is empty. There's cars all over the place. We see one of the aliens on top of the car and Eric holding on to Sam as they run to escape. Her yellow jacket isn't dirty as we saw on the debris scene. So this scene is probably around the subway scene. Quicker cuts from what looks like a school bus and the pressure of impact causes the windows to explode and Sam is covering her head. Another cut of what looks like a church by the overhanging camera candlelit chandeliers and the cathedral-like design. Her yellow jacket is missing. This might be right before or after she meets Dijmon Hasu's character. Sam's hand is outstretched on the rubble, so I assume someone's dead body is under that debris, and if it's Frodo, I 
will pop off. I will freak out if it's a cat. No cats are dying on my watch. Four military jets shoot across the gray skies. Then we see the falling of what I think is the Brooklyn Bridge. We can assume this is blown up by those jets. And I believe it was to stop the creatures from leaving or crossing into Manhattan, which would attract them to the noise. So I don't know if it's actually a good idea at the end of the day. This movie might actually answer the question, how was all the military just so bad? We saw the newspaper clippings about the military being defeated and some people were confused how we couldn't be prepared for this. And honestly, simple answer is it happened very quickly. In a lot of horror movies, the military's first instinct when the outbreak is outbreaking is to cut off the disease at the limb. So they're probably executing a strategy to keep them in one place, then blow that place up, which is probably this scene in the trailer. Eric and Sam probably found out about the plan of attack and we're trying to reach the Brooklyn Bridge in time. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's happening. I'm assuming the other bridges are out of commission or just destroyed. They could go the mist route and maybe the military was expecting this or saw hints of the thousand little fireballs headed our way, but couldn't react quick enough. Ultimately, I think it's unlikely the military knew it was aliens that are hypersensitive to sound with armor proof skin about to crash down. They probably expected like little meteorites. Next to Sam and Eric is Jimon Hansu's character who played the man on the island who appeared in the second movie. He was the man who had that small colony on the island and then the creature showed up and killed him. Hopefully in this movie though, we learn his name, how he adjusted so quickly, his family and his life before it all. Then we cut to Sam with ash and debris all across her face. She's clearly coming to, she awakes coughing when the man on the island covers her mouth to shush her. He must have ran into her after this scene because in the background we see the theater they're currently hiding in. He must have snatched her and dove into the theater lobby to hide, but it's very important to acknowledge right here how quick of a learner he was at the very beginning. Then we cut to Eric and Lupita. She's in the yellow jacket here as the building's glass all begins to fall with the creatures crawling like spiders down it. God, I, I hate it. I don't like bugs. This is probably part of this scene. They're running from the creatures and Sam is holding for dear life onto her cat. The end of the trailer gives us a number to text and I rightfully did, so you guys didn't have to. And I got a creepy text that said, shh, stay quiet, stay alive. So I'm in it for life now, I guess. I might die. This movie looks so fun. It looks like War of the Worlds, Cloverfield, and Godzilla. Like, I just love this franchise so much. There's so much room and time to make spinoffs for this world. Give me day 55. Give me my birthday. What happened in Los Angeles? How did we handle it? The trailer is clearly more chaos than order, so there are still a lot of questions, a lot of military mistakes, and timeline suggestions. This movie drops June 28th, and I will be set. Let me know if you're gonna go see it, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at lulu underscore clemens. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Check out The Break Room and The Deep Dive. Shh, be quiet, stay alive.